Whenever someone mentions fried chicken, KFC instantly comes to mind, right? Their slogan literally nails it because, let's be real, after eating KFC's chicken, we're all about licking those fingers. But do you know the history behind that finger-licking good Kentucky Fried Chicken? If you're a KFC fan, you're in the right place. Thinking about the image of that old guy with the snazzy white suit, black tie and epic beard. That's Colonel Harlan David Sanders, the brains behind KFC. Despite getting rejected a whopping 1,009 times, he never gave up on his dream of turning his recipe into a global brand. But did you know he ended up suing KFC? Yeah, he did. Curious why? Let's find out in this video. So, our story begins with a man who would become a culinary legend, Colonel Harlan Sanders. Born in 1890, Sanders had a knack for cooking from an early age. Growing up in Henryville, Indiana, his early life wasn't easy at all. He lost his dad at the age of just five. And his mum, Margaret Ann Olivia, had to hustle big time. She peeled tomatoes at a canning factory and stitched for neighbours at night. Basically, she was hustling 24-7. Sanders, being the oldest of three children, stepped up. Cooking and looking after his siblings became his thing. Little did he know, this cooking gig was about to change his whole life. When Sanders was just 10 years old, he found his first job on a nearby farm. Well, that gig didn't last long because he was too busy chilling with the animals instead of doing the actual work. Fast forward to 1902 and his mum tied the knot with a tough dude named William Broaders, and they moved to the suburbs near Indianapolis. Sanders' relationship with his stepdad wasn't exactly great. By the time he hit 12, Sanders dropped out of school, blaming it on the horrors of algebra. He started working on a nearby farm, kicking off a series of odd jobs during his wild teenage years. Farmhand, streetcar conductor, blacksmith, fireman, insurance and tyre salesman, steamboat operator, midwife, and even a secretary. But when Sanders got married at 18, he realised it was time for a more legit and stable job. You've got to bring home the bread and butter when you've got folks to take care of, right? So he decided to become a lawyer in Little Rock, doing that for three years. Unfortunately, his legal career came to an end after a courtroom brawl with his own client, which wrecked his reputation. Then he worked at the railroad, but got fired. Since Sanders was changing his job again and again, it was also affecting his family life and his mental health. But his next job at a gas station named Shell in North Corbin, Kentucky, changed his life forever. Working at a gas station in 1930, Sanders started serving meals to travelers using his cooking skills. Since a lot of travelers kept asking him for a good place to eat, he turned a storage room into a small diner and started selling ham, steaks, string beans, hot biscuits, and most importantly, fried chicken. His tasty meals soon became very popular among travelers. At the time, he was 40 years old and finally on the right track towards his destination. In 1935, Kentucky's governor, Ruby Lafon, recognized his contribution to the state's cuisine and awarded him the title of Colonel. By 1939, Sanders' food became even more popular when food critic Duncan Hines listed his restaurant in Adventures in Good Eating, a guide to restaurants in the US. In July 1939, Sanders opened a motel in Asheville, North Carolina, but it was destroyed in a fire in November 1939. Despite this setback, Sanders didn't give up. He built a 140-seat restaurant and kept selling meals. In July 1940, Sanders decided to change up his fried chicken recipe. Cooking the chicken took a long time at first, about 30 to 35 minutes. Around that time, pressure cookers were becoming popular. Even though they were mainly used for veggies, Sanders gave cooking chicken in them a shot. After some trial and error, he found a way to cook chicken in just eight to nine minutes. To make it even tastier, Sanders created a special seasoning mix called his secret blend of 11 herbs and spices. People went crazy for his unique fried chicken recipe, and Sanders dreamed of making it known worldwide. Fast forward to when he was 65, Sanders wanted to franchise his chicken success, but his early attempts were met with rejection after rejection, so he came up with a plan. He allowed other restaurants to sell his chicken and charged them four cents for each piece sold. He packed pressure cookers and his secret recipe into his 1946 Ford and hit the road, traveling across the United States. Sanders would persuade restaurant owners to cook his chicken by cooking it for their employees. If the employees liked it, he'd cook for customers for a few days, hoping the restaurant owner would want to join his franchise. Sanders spent countless nights in his car searching for a restaurant willing to sell his chicken. After facing rejection 1,009 times, he finally secured his first successful franchise in 1952, when Pete Harmon of South Lake in Utah agreed to sell Sanders' chicken. 
Pete even came up with the famous KFC catchphrase, it's finger licking good. Pete's sales tripled in the first year of selling Sanders chicken. After this big win, more people approached Sanders for franchise rights. By the end of 1963, he had franchised over 600 outlets across the US and Canada. As KFC began to spread its wings through franchising, one thing remained shrouded in mystery, the secret recipe. Sanders went to great lengths to keep it under wraps, even shipping the pre-made spice of the recipe to different suppliers to maintain the secrecy. When KFC became really successful, many international restaurants wanted to buy the franchise. A young lawyer named John Y. Brown Jr. and Jack Massey met with Colonel Sanders to buy his business. Sanders loved his business like his own child, so he said no. But Brown and Massey spent weeks convincing him to sell, promising to maintain better quality control for the franchise. Sanders traveled all over the country to get advice from franchises and business partners. Finally, he understood that the organization is hard to develop and control alone. So in 1964, at the age of 73, Sanders sold his company for $2 million, but with one condition, that the recipe would never change and the food quality would stay high. John agreed, and Sanders got a lifetime salary of $40,000, which was later upped to $75,000, majority ownership of KFC's Canadian franchises, and stayed as the brand ambassador. In 1971, John sold the company to a big food company, Hublin, and things took a turn for the worse. Unlike John, the new owners changed the recipe because they thought the old one was expensive and hard to make. After tasting the new recipe, Colonel was deeply dissatisfied with the direction his brainchild was taking. He opened his own competing restaurant, named after his second wife, Claudia Sanders, the Colonel's Lady Dinner House. The new owners of KFC sued him for opening a new restaurant using his own name. In response, Sanders sued the owners, claiming they had tarnished the brand and violated the terms of the sale. Sanders asked for the compensation of $122 million. The case got settled, and Sanders got $1 million. He reopened his competing restaurant as Claudia Sanders Dinner House, and it still exists today in Shelbyville, Kentucky. On December 16th, at 90 years of age, Colonel died of pneumonia in Louisville, Kentucky, but his secret chicken recipe that made KFC famous is the reason why we know him and see his face on the KFC logo today. Indeed, nothing out there can beat the finger-licking goodness of KFC's fried chicken. Its recipe is the copyright of KFC, and no other restaurant can replicate it. Another secret of KFC's success? Well, they've got this cool franchise thing going on. Now, as of 2022, KFC is the second biggest restaurant chain worldwide, right after McDonald's, with at least 25,000 outlets in 147 countries and territories. Can you believe it? Roughly 5 billion people have stepped into a KFC at some point, and it's also estimated that on any regular day, about 8% of the entire Earth's population will visit KFC. Quite a leap from a small gas station, right? All thanks to Colonel Harlan Sanders' never give up spirit. So next time when life seems tough, think of the Colonel. Colonel Sanders had a tough life, lost his dad early, had a rough time with his stepdad, got fired from jobs, and even messed up his legal career. But guess what? He came up with this awesome fried chicken recipe. The crazy part? He got rejected 1,009 times. Imagine the despair one might feel at this point, but instead of giving up, Colonel Sanders kept going. He turned things around and created one of the best fast food companies ever, giving us that finger-licking good chicken we all love. So, have you enjoyed this crazy story of KFC? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more interesting stories, and let us know in the comments which fast food chain you'd like to hear about next. Until next time, stay tuned.